I'm Tamara and today I am going to walk you through everything that you need to know to make this adorable fractured spiderweb pillowcase. This pillowcase uses up a ton of your scraps so pull out that scrap bin and I got some inspiration on this particular project from a book I got out of the library. I will link to this book in the description down below. She had a particular block in this book called The Fractured Spider Web. I omitted a few things, I had to change the measurements, but I wanted you to know where I got my inspiration. So let's jump into the tutorial so we can make an adorable fractured spider web pillowcase. Oh, and the insert for this pillowcase is an 18 inch insert. I will link to the one that I bought down below for this particular project. Now let's jump into that tutorial. So what you'll need for this project is a half a yard of fabric, as well as a scrap piece of fabric that is selvage to selvage. So you should be able to get two, two and a half strips of fabric from it, as well as a pile of your scraps. A few more helpful tools will be a water soluble pencil or pen, as well as a measuring gauge. Next, cut from your half yard piece of fabric, four squares cut at eight inches by eight inches. Once you have all four squares, then you will cut them in half into triangles. So you will end up with eight triangles in total. Next, we have to find the halfway point on all of our triangles. So grab your iron and just fold your triangles in half, wrong sides together, and then just iron on the corner there to create a bit of a crease. Grab a clip, clip it in place, and then do this for all eight triangles. Now it's time to split up our triangles into two groups of four. The reason why we do this is because we want to measure four from the tip to the right side at three inches. And then the other triangles we want to measure from the tip to the left side at two inches. You'll make a mark and then you'll draw a line from that marking to that center crease. So in the end, you will end up with four triangles that are marked two inches to the left and four triangles that are marked three inches to the right with lines drawn from those markings to that center crease. Then it's time to add our scraps. So grab scraps that overhang your triangle by about an inch on either side. You will lay all scraps right side together and then lay your first scrap so that that bottom edge runs along your marked line. Then sew a quarter inch seam across that edge. Then you'll be able to fold that piece of fabric over and press it in place. And now it's time to work your way all the way down to that bottom corner. So grab your second scrap and lay it along the raw edge of your first scrap right sides together take it to the sewing machine sew a quarter inch seam across that edge and then you can flip it open and press it in place you will do this method all the way to that bottom corner and do this for all four triangles then it's time to move on to the opposite four triangles and you will work your way to the opposite corner once you have done this to all eight triangle pieces, then it will be time to trim your pieces. Now don't worry about squaring it and making the edges perfect. Just trim along your back triangle piece of fabric for now. We will do the squaring off later. Now, as you can see, if you put these two pieces together and create a square, you will see that they match up quite nicely on the one edge. But then if you move that same triangle to the opposite edge, it doesn't match up at all. And we want that look. So don't get concerned if your pieces are not matching up. Once you have done this to all of the eight triangle pieces, then it's time to lay these triangle pieces out every other piece. And once you do that, you will see that you've created yourself your fractured spider web. This is your opportunity to sort your pieces out a little bit to make sure that similar scraps are not close by each other. And once you've got your spider web the way that you want it, then it's time to clip along the inside edges of all four squares. So a quarter inch seam across, and then press open that back seam. Now because you're dealing with a bit of a thicker seam, using a little bit of steam from your iron will help you press that seam open. Do this for all four squares. 
Once all four squares have been sewn together, then it's time to sew the bottom two squares together and the top two squares together. You will do this with a quarter inch seam as well. And then press those seams open. Now you've got your top and bottom sections to sew together, again using that quarter inch seam. It's getting a little bit thick in the middle, so when you sew over that center section, just go very slowly and your needle should make it through. And then take it to your iron and press that final seam open. Now that middle section is going to be a bit thick, so trim away some of the excess fabric from that middle section before you iron it flat. It will help you out a lot. And now it's finally time to square up our project. So grab your quilters ruler and just line it up along one edge and trim it away. After that, you'll be able to use that one edge to square up the rest of your project. So you'll be able to line up the top line of your ruler with the top edge of that first cut and then match it along the side of your square and go all the way around so you end up with a full square project. Now when I was done doing this trimming, this center section ended up being 14 inches wide by 14 inches wide. Double check your piece as well to make sure that it ends up being around 14 inches by 14 inches. Then take your larger piece of scrap fabric that should be selvage to selvage. Then cut two strips of fabric at two and a half inches wide. Then trim down these strips of fabric so that you end up with two pieces at 18 and a half inches in length and two pieces at 15 and a half inches in length. Now it's time to attach these strips to our center piece. So grab your 15 and a half inch strips, lay them on both sides of your fabric, right sides together, pin across and then sew a quarter inch seam across both edges. Then take this to your iron and press both seams to the side. This time we are not pressing them open. And now it's time to attach our longer two strips of fabric. We'll do them in the same way. So lay them across the edge, right sides facing in, pin all the way across, and then sew a quarter inch seam along both edges of fabric. Then take it to the iron and press those seams to the side as well. Then grab that quilter's ruler and just trim away the excess from your strips. And now it's at this point that we have a little fun hand sewing. I know, hand sewing is not my favorite. I don't know if it's yours, but this is actually a very simple project. So just grab some of your orange thread, two buttons, and just start hand sewing those two buttons on wherever you want your spider to be. So my larger button, of course, is for the back end of the spider, and then the smaller portion is for the front. And once those buttons are attached, then we can start sewing our spider legs. Now the way that I attached my spider legs was in two sections. So I started right underneath the button for my first stitch, and then I took my first stitch out. It's probably between a quarter to a half of an inch. And I did this stitch twice because I wanted my orange thread to stand out nice and strong. Once I did this, then I was able to decide where the end of my little leg was going to be. I put my needle through the fabric there and then I came back to the first part of the leg. And I did that loop twice as well. That way the legs are nice and prominent. If you're using a thicker thread, you might only need to do this stitch one time. And I did this for all eight legs. Now, if you end up running out of thread and you need to tie off your end and start again, just try to make most of your knots in behind the buttons because they will be less noticeable that way. Now, once you have attached your spider, it's time to actually turn this into a pillowcase. So let's cut out our backing fabric. I cut these pieces out of that half yard piece of fabric that we had for this project in the beginning. So you'll cut two pieces measuring out at 18 and a half inches by 12 inches. And then you will fold the widest end in at a half an inch, press it, fold it in one more time at a half an inch, press it again, and then clip all the way along that edge. 
Do this for both pieces of fabric and sew along that inner edge. Then lay both back pieces of fabric right side up, letting the sewn seams overlap each other with the top one overlapping the bottom one. Then you can take your spider web topper and lay it right sides facing in on top of that piece of fabric. Flip it over and pin around the entire edge. Then you will sew around this entire piece using a quarter inch seam allowance, starting with a backstitch and stopping with a backstitch. This really is the only time you need to backstitch throughout this entire project. Oh, and while I was sewing this quarter inch seam around the entire outer edge, I did do a backstitch along both of the side seams as well that were holding in the open flap, as I find they get pulled on a lot more when you're putting your pillow insert in so it's just something to help it stay in place then you'll want to snip all four corners away before you turn this entire project right side out now grab yourself a chopstick or the end of a pencil and just gently nudge those corners into a nice point then you'll take this entire pillowcase to your iron once again and just press all four edges so that they are nice and crisp if you have any questions or you just want to say hi, please leave them in the comments down below. I read every single comment. And if you're looking for more fun inspiration for Halloween sewing projects, like some of the fun ones behind me here, I will have a playlist linked in the description down below that will have all of my Halloween projects in it. So I hope that you will find something that you will enjoy sewing yourself there. And as always, hit that subscribe button, thumbs up, notification bell, because that helps me help you. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and a happy Halloween. Bye for now. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to talk to the camera.